Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbitals Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crude, crowd-funded space rocket, Spica. When you want to send things or people into space and you have your rocket on the launch pad fueled, tanks pressurized and all systems ready to go, it is of utmost importance that the component which initiates and regulates the propellants going into the engine does its job. So in today's video we will talk about the culprit of so many hard starts, failed starts, off nominal mixture ratios as well as rocket and spacecraft delays universally, propellant valves. Oh, and we will test the liquid oxygen valve prototype for our upcoming 100 kN LOX ethanol rocket engine that will power our crude speaker rocket. So, uh, this will be the uh, main valve and the actuating mechanism for the, for the speaker rocket. I um, spent the better half of the last 12 months uh, actually uh, preparing the designs and the actual prototype as part of my master's thesis at, uh, at DTU. So uh, as you can see, we have a motor driving an intermediate gearbox, driving an output gearbox connected to the valve shaft. And um, this, this whole setup is there to actually be able to actuate the, the valve bowl, which is approximately this size. It will channel uh, 25 liters of liquid oxygen every second to feed the BPM 100 engine. So it, it, it takes uh, quite a bit of, uh, of torque to actually open that up. There was also a requirement to make a very speedy opening of this uh, of this ball valve, um, the requirement there was one second. This is probably a good time to go over the ball valve itself. At Copenhagen Suborbitals, we try to constrain our system designs to a level that does not require expensive aerospace parts, and we constantly seek out commercial off-the-shelf components that could fit our system requirements at low costs, or at least could be easily modified to fit them. And as you guessed, this is typically the case with our valves as well. Apart from the whole motor and gearbox assembly that Adam designed using COTS components, the ball valve assembly itself is a mix of affordable commercial hardware and our own modifications to make everything meet the requirements of a rocket engine using cryogenic propellants like liquid oxygen in our case. So now let's take a look at the differences and challenges between cryogenic and non-cryogenic ball valves. If you consider a typical ball valve will be comprised of its housing, the rotating ball valve, its shaft and seals, the first thing you might already be thinking about is differential thermal contraction when using minus 180 degrees Celsius liquid oxygen in the system. So obviously we need to account for that fact when choosing the right seal material, while also considering how LOX compatible seals will wear against the material of the valve body. Then, related to seal wear and actuation is the issue of valve lubrication. Your off-the-shelf non-cryogenic valve will most likely use lubricants that don't play well in a liquid oxygen environment. And the third challenge is managing liquid oxygen boil-off. If some liquid oxygen remains trapped inside the valve opening once the valve is closed, it can start transitioning into its gaseous state, expanding by a factor of 800 and building up a lot of pressure which can lead to an unscheduled rapid disassembly. And at Copenhagen Suborbitals, we only like scheduled rapid disassemblies, not the unscheduled ones. But going back to the point, to prevent these overpressure events, we need to modify the ball valve for it to have a way to release any access pressure in its closed position. The fourth challenge, especially on large, quickly actuated valves, can be mechanical strain. Some materials become extremely brittle under cryogenic conditions and with large inertia of the ball valve and high speed actuation, this could lead to the ball shaft breaking. So this needs to be considered in the valve selection process as well. And finally, when working with any valves in critical applications, especially in a liquid oxygen environment, cleaning and contamination prevention is a major priority. You do not want any contaminants to react with liquid oxygen, nor get mechanically stuck in between contacting surfaces, preventing actuation and limiting your propellant flow. So now let's put our gloves on and see how Adam's valve assembly performed its first cryo test.
this is the first time that uh, we actually managed to test uh, the speaker main valves in real life. We had some simulation data uh, from uh, from my master thesis. How would it go? But it seems like that uh, the simulation data underestimated it uh, a bit in terms of opening speeds. So um, the original requirements were that uh, the main valves should open under one second. And uh, at the end of my master's thesis, uh, we didn't have the option to test the full system because we lacked the uh, test setup for it. But now that the test setup is uh, finally done, it seems like that this one second opening uh, time will be able to, um, to exist with this, uh, with this valve setup. Uh, I think the simulations predicted 1.6 seconds or something like that. So, so it's uh, quite a, quite a nice surprise that the real life actually performs better than the than the simulations were. So, um, as we as we just uh, seen in the test, it actually is capable of opening the valves at liquid oxygen temperatures under pressure. So, so it would seem that this setup, which is right now just a prototype, um, after some refinement, can find its way into the speaker rocket. But we will, we will still see that. Um, actually, it, uh, I would like to thank um, Wittenstein, who were so kind and provided us the, uh, the intermediate gearboxes for, for these tests. Um, it really uh, served a nice purpose. Now, before we go, we know some of you are asking why not use solenoid valves instead? We are actually trying out this concept on our current recruits rocket where the small diameter plumbing is well suited for these but for the larger 3 inch diameter propellant lines in the speaker rocket the ball valves have a few advantages going for them. The most important advantage is that the servo motor controlled ball valve can adjust the valve for any percentage opening where solenoid valves are either open or closed. Plus they are typically lighter compared to solenoid valves and our solution is also quite cheap and reliable. So we hope that answers your question. And lastly before we go we are excited to say that we have just started building the first BPM100 engine as well as its static test stand. We hope you'll find this development process exciting so subscribe and ring the bell to not miss any of the upcoming updates. Schmuck. That is all for now, so as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. The reason we're getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you enjoy watching these insider videos on building a space program and you would like to become an even bigger part of it, you can help us out by going over to our website www.copsum.com and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation. We all do this for free in our spare time so you'd be surprised how much every little bit helps and thank you if you feel like what we do and share is interesting.